My name is Valerie Hu, and I'm a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology at the George Washington University Medical Center. Six years ago, I decided to use a sabbatical leave from GW to redirect my research towards autism. My main motivation for being in autism is really because of my son, Matt, um, who was diagnosed with PDD-NOS almost 21 years ago. And that was my first introduction, and it was, at the time, quite devastating because so little was known about it. Right now, there is no specific medication for autism. Most of what is used is, you know, uh, off-label, and it's kind of on a trial and error basis. And that's because we really don't understand the biology. But if we do understand the biology, then we can either use drugs that are specific to whatever needs to be treated or to develop new drugs. The bulk of our research is geared towards two main things. One is to understand the biology of autism, which would help us identify new targets for therapy. The other goal is to, um, to use, to, to identify biomarkers. That means to identify molecules that are different in individuals with autism that can be used for earlier diagnosis. Particularly for families in which there's a history of autism, it would help to have a molecular type of diagnosis that can be implemented almost immediately after birth so that one can um, intervene earlier to help the individual with autism. Some of the barriers to autism research are the differences um, in individuals with autism. I think any parent can tell you that there is such a wide variety of symptoms. This is not really taken into account when um, many genetic studies are done. In other words, all the individuals with autism are kind of lumped into one pot and compared against individuals without autism in, in terms of looking for gene mutations. We're not taking into account the differences in the individuals which may be caused at some level by differences in the genetics. In trying to tease apart the different subgroups or subtypes or flavors of autism, what we did was we took advantage of the behavioral profiles uh, which were scored in terms of severity um, of different symptoms. And we ended up by using different types of clustering analyses, we identified four different subtypes of autism, one of which was um, a group of individuals that, were, that was characterized by severe language impairment. Interestingly, this group also seemed to be more affected by um, sleep disturbances and epilepsy. There was um, another group at the opposite end of the spectrum, very mild. So that would be a second group. We had a group of individuals that had noticeable savant skills. These are skills in which individuals would have extraordinary memory or, audio or visual spatial skills or um, computational skills, artistic uh, skills or music abilities. And I think we've all heard about these individuals that we call savants. What was interesting about the different subtypes of autism that we identified on the basis of behavior is that the biology that distinguishes each of these subgroups from non-autistic individuals were also different from each other, as well as different from individuals without autism. And the genes that were different in the different groups um, did associate with some of the features or symptoms of autism in that particular group, such as epilepsy or sleep disturbance that associated with individuals with severe language impairment. This demonstrates the biological underpinnings of autism. And furthermore, some of the data suggests certain kinds of therapies would, would be appropriate for that group. For example, if there are um, 
circadian rhythm dysfunction, that is dysfunction in the sleep-wake cycle. The gene, the, one can use those genes as targets for therapy. As a parent, my goal in autism research would be to discover something that is going to be helpful to individuals with autism, not just my son, but also my son, such that we'll have a better handle at treating whatever the differences are in order to make life better for them.